Oh, hello, come in, come in. Oh, hi, nice to see you again. This is very timely because, um, unbelievably, I'm about to go off to the States again. I'm, this is quite exciting. I'm going to go to uh, New York, which I haven't been to since I passed through it very briefly as a young man. Um, so um, I'm actually going to go and do some things for Keith and Christian Getty, the hymn writers, including, rather to my amazement, I'm going to... Uh, no, I'm not working as very well, this. I'm going to um, read some poetry at Carnegie Hall, so that will be fun. Uh, now, uh, preparing for that is a kind of Christmas concert. Put me in a slightly Christmassy mood. So, now, let me see. Um, here we are. I'll show you this, and I'll read you one of it. I've read you some... Do have a seat. I've read you some G.K. Chesterton before. I think maybe last Christmas will be the one before I read you his wonderful Father Christmas story, The Shop of Ghosts, and I've read you bits of his poetry, but I'd like to read you one of his Christmas poems. I like this. This is, you'll have a look at this. This is the collected poems published during his lifetime. There were various editions. This one is from uh, 1938 and look it's not that lovely it was a present from somebody uh, and they've written and still my heart has wings Laura <laughs> so I don't know who knew Laura or was given this this book but of course it's a quotation from that wonderful song uh, these foolish things uh, remind me of you uh, Still my heart has wings, these foolish things remind me of you. So it's rather nice. And I'm sure Chesterton would be glad to be numbered among the foolish things. He was in his own way a kind of holy fool. But um, he was also um, a master, really, of the the ballad form. He had a, there's a great swing and rhythm and alliteration in his poetry, and it was very popular in its day. Everybody thinks that poetry changed forever in 1922 when T.S. Eliot published The Wasteland, but not a bit of it. These collections of Chesterton's poetry are still selling hugely and being enjoyed very widely. Uh, you know, well, 1922 to 1937, that's 15 years after Eliot implicitly told us we shouldn't like this sort of thing. But funnily enough, we still do like it. Um, anyway, this is a really fine kind of meditation which maybe is particularly pertinent to our times with so many refugees on the road with such bleak coldness with the the cost of heating and it's about if you like the kind of the vagrancy of Christ and our apparent at homeness in places but actually how it's the other way around it's a wonderful Chestertonian paradox that that it's only with the homeless Christ that we can really be at home. Anyway, you I won't spoil the plot, as it were. I, I'll just read you the poem. It's, it's got a great swing to it. And um, um, I don't see it included often in sort of modern Christmas anthologies or anything, but I think it's, it's a classic in its own way. It's just called The House of Christmas. There fared a mother driven forth out of an inn to roam in the place where she was homeless. All men are at home. The crazy stable close at hand, with shaking timber and shifting sand, grew a stronger thing to abide and stand than the square stones of Rome. For men are homesick in their homes, and strangers under the sun, and they lay their heads in a foreign land whenever the day is done. Here we have battle and blazing eyes and chance and honour and high surprise, but our homes are under miraculous skies where the Yule tale was begun. A child in a foul stable where the beasts feed and foam, only where he was homeless are you and I at home. We have hands that fashion and heads that know but our hearts we lost, how long ago, 
in a place no chart nor ship can show under the sky's dome. This world is wild as an old wife's tale, and strange the plain things are. The earth is enough and the air is enough for our wonder and our war. But our rest is as far as the fire drake swings, and our peace is put in impossible things, where clashed and thundered unthinkable wings round an incredible star. To an open house in evening, home shall men come. To an older place than Eden, and a taller town than Rome. To the end of the way of the wandering star, to the things that cannot be, and that are, to the place where God was homeless, and all men are at home. That's just a wonderful, I think, so... If we don't happen to bump into each other again uh, before Christmas, perhaps we will. But even so, I, I send that out with Christmas blessings. Thanks for dropping by.